gospel this morning is according to Luke in the seventh chapter. sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. And then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which one of them will love him more? And Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair, and you gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. And you did not anoint my head with oil but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. And then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Now go in peace. And soon afterward, he went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, and from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod Stuart, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. This is the gospel. These are the people who are the core, the backbone of what religion is meaning at that 
time. And they don't invite anybody but themselves or somebody who, like Jesus, is certainly controversial but interesting. He, he seems to have this kind of cough of the people and they got to find out more about him. And so this Pharisee Simon says, come to dinner. And so he does. And then this woman, this audacious woman, who they already know from the town around them, is a sinner. Yes. It's almost like watching Elmer Gantry, how you know, come ye sinners. Now, he doesn't say what kind of sinner she is, but isn't it always true when a sinner erupts up into the gospel, in your mind you know what kind of sinner she is? <laughs> you kind of think, well, I know that. But, but Luke doesn't say, just a sinner. And she comes in, in the midst of all of this, it, it's kind of a you're having a dinner party at your house, right? Got it? And the most notorious person in town comes right in the midst of it, unannounced, ignoring you, going straight to the person you have invited, who seems to have the most understanding and compassion, walking right by you, ignoring you. Oh, and there it comes. <laughs> And she does these terrible things right in front of him. Gets down, washes feet, ointment, taking hair, long hair, wiping Jesus' feet. It is the ultimate act of compassion on her part toward him and also acknowledging that somehow she understands who he is and she has some type of need. Now, the interesting part about all of this is that it's most probable that she has already been forgiven. She's had an account with Jesus before this happens because he says, your faith has saved you. And she kind of knew that she had to go to him and she avoids all the talk that might be done and does something because something was done to her first. She is in response. And so as a result, she's got to do what she's got to do. Oh, and Simon. <laughs> He's watching all of this, and he's gritting teeth. He's no prophet. What kind of a man allows a notorious sinner to walk into my house with this? After I've invited him, gets down on her knees, washes feet, anoints, cries with tears, and he's watching this, and inside he's saying, surely he knows she is a sinner. And Jesus has got him right where he wants him, doesn't he? He's excited. Now, a certain creditor had two debtors, one owing 500 denarii, the other 50. He cancels the debt. Now, which one is going to love him more? And Simon, in true form, has to, has to say, I suppose. <laughs> you suppose, Simon? Do you really? Did you have some doubt about the possibility of that statement? I suppose the one. He turns around and says, look at this woman. I came in and you didn't even give me the customary washing of my feet. I don't know why you didn't do that. Is there something wrong with my feet? That she should be washing my feet, but not you? You didn't greet me with a kiss, so customary. Couldn't bring yourself to do it? Was it the fact that you saw me yesterday because I was sitting with sinners? Is it in your mind that maybe I'm one of them too? Ah, but she hasn't. You didn't anoint my head with oil, which is a sign of greeting, but she did. And then he says to her, your sins are forgiven. And he says to Simon, you know, to whom little is forgiven, they love very little too. Because they don't know what they've been forgiven in heart. And so he says, your sins are forgiven, but those at the table, Simon's buddies, say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he says to the woman, your faith has saved you, now go in peace. Wonderful story, isn't it? Aren't you on the side of her? <laughs> don't, you see, yeah, don't you feel like you're on the side of her? Haven't there been moments in your life when you really, really need to know that you're forgiven for anything, something? 
And somehow, if it's not from a person, you want to be able to know that despite falling flat on your face, that God is on your side. And, and that's what all of this is for, for us. But there's another side to the equation, isn't it? Do you really like Simon? No, you don't. <laughs> you don't like him. You know what he's up to. He's playing his game. I suppose, he says. But in that very act of deciding that he is the one that you're against this morning, you may prove yourself to be a little bit of a Simon, you see, because you like her. But you're looking at him and saying, oh, He's tough, he's rough, he doesn't know what it is to be forgiven, but you ought to want him to know it, don't you? Isn't it funny how we're caught up in this situation? <laughs> Yay, lady. <laughs> Ooh, Simon. <laughs> and the proof is in our judgment over and against. Because, you see, Jesus did come for all of these people, but at the same time, he did also come for Simon. It just doesn't get him yet. Doesn't understand it. And there's a whole bunch of people who don't get it, who don't understand it. And I have to admit, at any given time, I have to be one of them. I waffle back and forth, don't you? Don't you find yourself in that situation? It's like, I believe, I want forgiveness, I love you, Lord. And the next day, he's like, why? What you want of me isn't what I want of myself. So, I guess the only question is tomorrow, where are you going to fall? You're going to be a Simon, you're going to be a notorious sinner, you're going to be one of forgiveness, etc. and so on. It's, it's just one of those things, but sometimes you have to look back, and I want to take this, because when we had the prayer of the day, let me go back and take a quick look. Where was it? Where was it? Yeah. Ah, here it comes. Oh God, throughout the ages, you judge your people how with mercy, and you inspire us to speak your truths. By your spirit, anoint us for lives of faith and service, and here it comes, and bring all people, all people, into your forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Bring her who wiped Jesus' feet, but also bring Simon too. Bring the Simons of the world, because they need to hear it, perhaps even more than this woman did, because somehow they feel but they've already gotten it. And in that very statement, they proved themselves to be having not gotten it at all. So, the prayers of the faithful, we're going to bring off all kinds of names of people who have been brought in. We do this in every service, right? Bill is going to read a whole list of folks who want us to pray for them. And then it comes to that part where we name those people silently or out loud, those people in our hearts. Gather up the Simons of your life. Take that time to give them to God. Because sometimes they're so dumb they don't even know they need to be forgiven. And in so doing that type of thing, you see, you walk away from the possibility of becoming Simon in the text. And you're able to wash the feet of Jesus, maybe not with your hair, but in what you do and what you say in this church and how you treat other people when you walk out that door. Life is waffling back and forth, isn't it? We're never really Simon all the time. We're never really her all the time. But no matter where we are, we need him bad. And you can always have him. And so, bring the Simons of your life into your prayers this morning. No matter who that person is, they don't even know how much they need. Recall. story of a prophet who was supposed to go into a city and proclaim that they were going to be destroyed unless they repented. And wouldn't you know they went and repented? <laughs> and so the prophet sits there and he's angry and God says, you're angry? Yeah, I am. Why? Oh, I knew you'd do this. <laughs> I knew it. You always taught me you were merciful, you were forgiven, and my God, you went and did it to the people I hate. How could you do this to me? And God says, 
this is a group of people who don't know their right hand from their left. <laughs> and they turned to me, what would you expect me to do? And that would be the crucial point, you see, when God decides to forgive and be merciful to the very person that we have judged not needing it or deserving it in any shape or form, and then he goes and he does it. Darn it all. Except when we need it, and then we love it for it, don't we? Come, let us gather up our assignments. Let's offer them up to God in prayer this morning. For all of those people who don't know their right hand from their left, and then discover tomorrow when we look in the mirror, it might